Father, we thank you for your presence in our midst as we come into the season of commemorating your birth. May we celebrate it in a way that is pleasing to you. Because we know, Lord, that you are the center of this season. You are the reason for the season of Christmas. And so, Lord, we thank you. You are reminding us that without your birth, there is no death and there is no resurrection. And without these things, we have no salvation in our lives. Salamat Panginoon sa panibagong buwan, panibagong lakas, panibagong araw that you had given us to honor you and worship you again. And Lord, as we come to you, we ask you that you cleanse our hearts from all sin. And as we come upon your word, you said in John 17, Father, sanctify them with your word, for your word is truth. Yes, Lord, we are in this life to be sanctified, to be made in the image and likeness of your Son. And we walk into the newness of that life that you have given us, the life that we possess already in our hearts in our lives by the Spirit of God. And Father, minister to us this morning in a new way, in a fresh new way, Lord God. Speak to each one, to each heart that is here today. That as they listen, hindi lamang mapasok sa kabilang tenga at lalabas. But Lord, we'll sing into their hearts. And Father, indeed, that when we live your life, Leave your word. There is transformation. There is holiness. There is obedience. And follows the blessings that you prepare for us. Salamat Panginoon sa presensya mo. At salamat din Lord sa mga bagong dalo. We welcome them into your name. And we pray that they will have a deeper and personal relationship with you today. And Father, to all of us, thank you for bringing us here again to share your goodness your faithfulness, your love to one another. Salamat Panginoon, we bless you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, wala na yung magsabing. Amen. Good morning. Open your Bibles with me, but before that, let us all stand and let us read our uh, worship declaration today. Let us hold our Bible and let's read what is in the screen. Today, today I will listen to God's word. I will not be very clean and empty, but I will accomplish what He desires in my life and achieve the purpose to which He was sent to me. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Palapakan natin ang Panginoon. Salamat. You may now take your seat. In this season of Christmas, there will be many celebrations. We celebrate Christmas as a family gathering. We celebrate it as an appreciation. We celebrate as an excuse to party. Kaya marami na naman party sa dorm. Pero wala naman ang presensya ng Diyos. Some celebrate it with tradition. Last night I was watching in cable TV about Christmas cookies and uh, uh, Merry Before Christmas. And they have this in one town that they have so many traditions about Christmas. Some celebrate it in a religious way. Mag-uumpisa nam naman ang simbang gabi. Eh dito, walang simbang gabi. Paano? Simbang umaga na lang. You see, these are things that we 
do during Christmas, but some celebrate it in a genuine celebration of the birth of Christ. And if you look around, last time I was in Changwa, last Thursday, we ate in a steakhouse and there was a Christmas tree. And I asked the Taiwanese lady, I said, you know what is this? She said, no, it's Christmas. And I say, you know what Christmas is all about? She said, no. See? So it becomes commercialized. All over the world, there are even the department stores, they have this Christmas decors. And so we lost the true meaning in our celebration. And even substituted by other things that has nothing to do on the original Christmas. So many Christians who are really in zeal of the Lord, like me, understanding all these things, we tried to check out, we tried to avoid the way the world's way of celebrating Christmas. And people would even ask me, Pastor, how would we know that December 25 is the birth of Jesus Christ? Do you know? Do you know why it becomes December 25? So today we will answer those questions. So we will have a little bit of history lessons. Because I'm the person who, since I know the Lord, I don't want to do the things that I don't understand. Because we already live by faith in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Unless we take that responsibility, there will no be transformation in our lives. So, even people would say Christmas is of pagan origin, so they don't celebrate Christmas. They go into extreme. And then they called Santa Satan Claus. Instead of Santa Claus, Satan Claus. And we know uh, that what age are you that you didn't you know you knew that Santa didn't exist? Huh? All when I was young, I already know how could he come into the chimney with a belly that's so big? <laughs> Don't believe in Santa, but some of you look like Santa already. <laughs> and so this is a good time to talk about the background of Christmas this is a good day to talk about Christmas buti na lang when I talk about Santa wala pa yung mga bata but later on they will they will realize and we have to deal with the truth and sometimes it's truth hurts and so this is a good time to talk about the background of christmas and our christian view point about christmas are you ready and so basically tayo na mga kristiyano let me say this to us as christians that we celebrate Christmas as Christians is only about, Christmas is only about the birth of Jesus Christ. The incarnation of Christ, Jesus coming into the world, and that's basically the end of the story. So why there's Christmas tree, and why there's Parol, and why there's Belen, and why there's Santa Claus? And we have Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer. And we have those kinds of decoration, the tree, etc. But first of all, we know in the early church in the Bible that the apostles never celebrated Christmas. Remember? When Jesus rose from the dead, Acts chapter 2, Matthew 28, what is his command? Go. Preach the gospel into all nations. 
baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I commanded you, and lo, I will be with you always till the end of the age. You didn't know that those, those, uh, those disciples were Chinese? He said, go, go, Mr. Go. <laughs> and lo, I will be with you always. And so, just kidding. And so we know in Acts chapter, in the book of Acts, that they never celebrated Christmas. So where did the Christmas celebration came from? Who knows? So maybe if you don't read history, and all you do is f Facebook every day, and the uh, games, Candy Crush, so your mind is numb and dumb. December 25 is not a pagan day, but it was a response of the Christians in the 4th century. There was this pagan celebration of a winter solstice by the Roman people that started around December 17 and concluded on the night of the 24th. Pastor, sa mo kinukuha? You search. When you study why we do what we do. And so, this is, they celebrate this feast for the goddess called Saturnilia, comes from the word Saturn. It's the feast of Saturnilia, the god of agriculture. Are you listening? And so it, they do this every winter because on winter time, it's the best time to celebrate because you cannot farm your land. It's, the harvest is stored. And so they celebrate this week-long feast called Saturnalia. And in that century, in that day, before the fourth century came in, the Christian does not like the celebration because this is a pagan celebration. Even in Taiwan, you have the god of flower, the god of the sea, the god of Suguru, god of Surut, god of Isis, god of... No? You have all the gods. When you go to, to Nepal, there are 33,000 gods. They, these are pagan in worship. And so, the Christian intended to respond for this feast because you don't do much in winter, and then that they set that day, December 25, to celebrate, to commemorate the birth of Jesus Christ. Maliwanag ba? So now you understand. So it is not a pagan day. In fact, it is a Christian day in response to a pagan worship. And so today, whether we are present today or in the second century, in 2,000 years ago, whatever reason except that you celebrate about the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, then there is nothing more than a pagan celebration. When I was not yet a Christian, we have a church called Kami ang tawag sa amin mga Kristo. At pag Pasko, may Christmas Derby. <laughs> And that's how I celebrate Christmas. And that's my church. Sabungan. And so, we see these things all around us that there is, we call Christmas, Christmas disco, Christmas derby, Christmas party, but all of that out of the Christmas commemoration of the birth of Christ came again a pagan form of celebration. So it is in response. So the charge that Christmas is a pagan holiday is in fact the opposite. The many pagan celebration or holiday came out of the Christmas celebration. Amen. A lot of this is going on today. And so another argument is that Christmas was not commanded by the Bible, by the 
by the Lord in the Bible. This is the argument of the Jehovah Witnesses. And that's why they don't have Christmas. But that is not true. So go with me on Luke. Because even the angels celebrated the birth of Christ when he was born. In Luke chapter 2, so the argument that Christmas was not commanded in the Bible is not a common question. So we know that the heaven celebrated the birth of Christ. Luke chapter 2 verse 8. This is what it says. Now there were what? In the same country, shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Verse 9. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly terrified. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to what? To all people. There the gospel that Christ was not just born as a savior of the Jewish people, but to all people. Sabihin mo sa katabi mo, tao ka ba? Yeah. Right? It's for all people. And then it says, for what? For there is born to you this day in the city of David. Why it is important that the angel said, in the city of David, a savior who is Christ the Lord. Because according to the Messianic prophecy in the Old Testament, that the Messiah will come through the line, to the throne of David, that will sit on the throne of David forever and ever. So Matthew, uh, Luke, writes this because they knew they're trying to prove the authenticity of the lineage of the origin of Christ. That he is the Messiah, that he is God. And this will be assigned to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was the angel, a multitude of the heavenly host, what? Praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. So the argument that we are not to celebrate Christmas, yeah, it's not commanded. But if the angel celebrated, much more you who were born again, saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, would not celebrate his birth. And so, another thing is, when we start to sing this Christmas song, when the Christmas season is there, I don't know with you, but there is a deep meaning na ninanam na mo about the lyrics of the song, the theology of the song, the toxology of the song, that even it's an old Christmas song, it's still there, the power, the impact in your lives, in our lives. And so, even more further, why can, why can we celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection? How come we not will not celebrate the birth? Because we cannot disconnect the death and the resurrection to the birth. So it's foolish to say that celebrating Christmas is not biblical or scriptural. Are you listening? And so, it's not even just the birthday going further. We don't celebrate, happy birthday, Jesus. <laughs> happy birthday, Jesus. We don't sing that. What we really celebrate is the incarnate Christ. That God, Son, one and only Son, came born of a human. The deity become a humanity. Hindi, not reincarnation, that the Hindus and the Buddhists believe. We don't reincarnate. It's incarnate. God incarnated into man. Not like the incarnation belief that you are now a, a man. And so when you incarnate, the highest form of animal is a cow. So you will be a holy cow.
we don't incarnate. We don't reincarnate. When we die, we go straight to heaven. When you are not in Christ, you go straight to hell. When you die as a Christian, you go to Langit. When you die as an unbeliever, you go to Pangit. So you choose. Because that's what the Bible says in Hebrews 9.27. Once a person is only destined to die, and then judgment. There is no departure area, waiting room. Like when you ride an airplane, you must be in the pre-departure area. No, when you die, you immediately go into the presence of God. Paul said it clearly, absent in the body, present in the Lord as believers. And so, again, we don't celebrate for, for, we don't even sing a birthday, but it's the incarnation in John chapter 1 verse 14. What did it say? And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us and beheld, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the one, as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And the Word became flesh. Who is that? Jesus. The Word is W. In fact, if you go back in John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was with God from the very beginning. Let's change the Word word into Jesus. In the beginning was Jesus. And Jesus was with God. And Jesus was God. He was with God from the beginning. And so it makes sense in John 1 14. And Jesus, God, became what? Flesh. And dwelt a while for among us. How it's a while? 33 years. 33 years. Who is here 33? Raise your hand. Mga babae, ayaw nyo na 33. Who is 33? So, imagine mo, at 33 you die. Very young. Amen? And another related argument is that why we need to celebrate on December 25? Nobody really knows the exact date. Of the birth of Jesus. Some historians do this. One historian, his name is Hepo, I, I forgot. Why it's December 25? Because he, according to to how to say, Herod, in that case, in Matthew, they tried to estimate that, and they arrived with the date, March 25. Are you listening? March 25, the announcement, the conception, and he added nine months, so it's December 25. And there are many historians who, who really uh, search and try to prove that the birth is December 25. But no matter what we do, and even some people says that it's not December 25 because it's winter, so no shepherds will, will bring their sheep out of the field. Somehow that might be true, but have you been in Israel? I've been. Have you been in California, where I came from, to visit? If you compare the two season, the season in California and in Israel is similar. There is no such thing as a very, very thick snow or winter. When you go to California, it is only in the high mountains that have a snow, like the place, the Big Bear. And so, not in the lowlands. So to say and argue that it's not December or whether it's not December, it does not matter which day he was born. What matters is why we celebrate Christmas. We could know the exact date, the year, 
Are you listening? Then we can know the exact date and year of birth of the Lord, but we could still miss the reason of celebration. So it doesn't matter whether it's December 25, if you want uh, April, April 1, up to you. That is for the day of fools, April 1. <laughs> and the Bible says, the fool says there is no God. So you could celebrate September 25 if you want. Pero ikaw lang magbabati. Merry Christmas. <laughs> so the date doesn't matter. What matters is why we celebrate. Amen? Why we celebrate? Again, because what? Because God, because He is God who came into flesh, laid down His life as an atoning sacrifice for our sin so that we can experience forgiveness and everlasting life. Sa pagmadali ko, hindi ko na nabigay ang title ng sermon. Because ang title is very important. So, you want to know the title? A Christian Christmas. A Christian Christmas. Because today, there are so many Unchristian Christmas. So having a Christian Christmas. And that is the point I want to, you to embrace today. And then when those arguments come, you, you answer them with humility. Not in argument, but in the spirit of humility and love to win more for Jesus. So it, Christmas is far more than the heart, than the calendar. Amen? And so it doesn't matter what date because even centuries back in the Old Testament, God gave importance to celebration. Every year, ang mga Israelites or Jewish people, they celebrate the Feast of the Passover. Yearly, they celebrate that, the Feast of Tabernacles. The day of atonement. And when you come into the New Testament, what is the instruction of the Lord? That we are to celebrate communion. That's His death. Amen? That is remembering the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we, we, we Christians commemorate resurrection. Sunday after Sunday, why it's Sunday? Because on the first day of the week, Mary came into the tomb. What is the first day of the week? You say it's Monday, that's your first day of work. The first day of the week is Sunday. And so we give emphasis, and that's why hindi natayo, we no longer say Simba, we do Samba. Pero yung iba na lampa, Sumba. And that's why we celebrate every Sunday. Why we rejoice every Sunday? Because we have a living hope. Because our God did not remain dead. He is alive. He is not here. He is alive. And there is no death without the birth. And that's why the Muslim wants to prove that Christ did not die. In their books, they want to argue that Christ did not die, that he just had a coma. Really? <laughs> coma. Okay, let's follow. Those who argue that, I will challenge them. Let's copy how he was being put to death and crucified. Let's see if you will be in coma. And so, God gave 
emphasis in celebrating occasions. And that's why we celebrate also the birth. Because without the birth, there is no death. Without the death, there is no resurrection. Now another question is, we criticize, I had criticized the Christmas tree. And if you notice, I no longer put Christmas tree because on the first place, it's not a real tree, it's plastic. <laughs> and so another argument is, there are people who, who say that the Bible forbids to cut down trees. You know where is that? Okay, you go to Jeremiah chapter 10. And if you look at the first five verses, you will say na bawal na ang Christmas tree. <laughs> so let's read first Jeremiah 10, 